Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to do the adjustable bias mod on a PB Butcher. I've done quite a few videos on PB Butchers over the years, and you can go back through the channel and see those where I do some maintenance and do some recaps and things like that. But today we're just going to zero in on the bias circuit. Well, nothing is ever as easy as it seems. It looks like someone else has already attempted a bias mod here. This is a pretty poor implementation of adjustable bias. Uh, you'll see the difference between the way I do it and the way this was done with just globbing on some hot glue and having some components fly around. This is not a very good method of work. I don't like that at all. They've only replaced one cap. And then it looks like maybe the choke or something. It, there's no choke in these circuits, but there is a big wire round resistor here. This looks like it's in pretty bad shape. Obviously all this discoloration here, it's it's overheated and leaked or something. It, whatever that is, it's not right and it's it's got to come out. All in all, this is not a big deal because we want to take this board completely off to do the bias mod anyway. And you need to get some of these capacitors out of your way to end up getting the new bias circuitry in. So this is something that was going to be covered in that scope of work regardless. First, just take all these quick connects off. And that's it. I love that, that it's that easy to get off. All right, you're going to need a quarter inch driver to get these screws out here. All right, we've got our whole board out, so this should be pretty simple. Take all these components off. We're going to have to get all the big solder globs off the back side, which is really easy if you have a desoldering gun. So you only need three components to be able to do this adjustable bias mod. And the first thing you got to do is take out this piece right here, which would have been R53. This is a 47K resistor stock. It's already gone, and we're going to want to put a 10K resistor in series with a potentiometer. First, you want to make sure one of the legs is in line with these holes, which basically puts the other leg right in line with this hole here. So if we drill a one millimeter hole, in between this hole and the edge of the board, we'll be able to stick this leg through and mount that. Now we can solder that in place now. So now we have our potentiometer modded and that is not going anywhere. So next we want to take this 10K resistor, put it in the hole where R43 was, go ahead and tack that into place. So now we have R53 replaced with a 10K resistor in series with the 25K pot. And we next thing we need to do is take out this component here, which is R52. This is a 470 ohm resistor. We're going to change that out for a 3K. Now the bias resistor has been installed. We put in the correct value fuse. We replace this piece here. Now we can start repopulating the board with the correct filter capacitors. So all the caps are here in place, ready to be mounted down. I usually pre-bend them before I solder them in. So we can go ahead and take these out. And all I'm 
going to do is put a little dab of silicone underneath where each cap is going to sit. There we go. Now we got a fresh power supply board. Looks much cleaner than what we started with, don't you think? To keep this video short and sweet, I've omitted all the other work that I've done to it. Before you move forward with this, I highly recommend you replace all the other electrolytic caps on the preamp board, and there is one more on the output board. I've detailed the process for all this in another video on the channel. Check it out. So I've got one probe hooked up to my meter here. I've got another meter right here with the other probe hooked up. I've already got the plate voltage off the amp, which is about 470 volts. So we want to take the plate dissipation of a 6L6, about 30 watts, divide that by the plate voltage. So we should be at about 41 milliamps per tube. Let's try that again with a lighter bias. So yeah, we can go as low as 38 milliamps per tube. So let's go ahead and turn this off standby. And we basically just reach in. Slowly turn our new trim pot up. Looks like I've got about a two milliamp difference between the sides. Not a big deal. So I'm going to do it about 41. So actually that's pretty close. This one's idling at about 41 milliamps. This one's about 39.5, 39.7. I'm pretty happy with that. Well, let's go ahead and plug a guitar through it. See how it sounds. All right, I hope this video helped show you the right way to do the adjustable bias mod on your old PV Butcher. Stay tuned to the channel. I've got a VTM60 up next that's going to get about the same treatment. And I've got plenty of other amplifiers on the bench that are going to need some work too. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.